Hey, what's going on, family? Thank you for checking out this podcast snippet. If you like what you hear in this snippet, you can tune in to the full podcast episode by clicking the links below in the description. Thank you. And until the next time we hop on the podcast together, shalom. One thing I want to touch on, you know, um, that kind of reminds me of what I see when, when, when we have individuals idolizing their servants or idolizing their spiritual leaders. And when I say servant, some of you guys might cringe like, oh, you know, you know, especially if some of you, you preachers or pastors are listening, because, you know, a lot of times in church, we, we, the preacher don't reference himself as a servant, even though the irony of it is that Jesus said the least of those are going to be great among you. The servants is going to be great among you. But yet we, you know, we don't hear our leaders talk from that perspective is always put me in this high regard, you know, um, keep me above everything else and things of that nature. But listen, we are here to serve. It is scriptural. It doesn't mean that you doesn't, you don't reverence your leader or show them love, but you don't ever, ever put them in a place of God. And that's why when those individuals mess up, the, the whole church fall apart. People go back to their old life and stuff like that. Why? Because they didn't have a connection to the word and to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Their connection was to the preacher. And anytime your connection is to the preacher, anytime he's not pointing you to the, to the real plug, then when it's all said and done, you're going to find out that there was no power there, that that you weren't, you know, you were not connected to the real source. Anytime they are making themselves the source, that is a lie from the pit of hell. They should always be pointing to Jesus Christ and the cross. They should always be pointing to what he did for us and why he did it for us. And that's what this documentary is pointing out. But the last thing I wanted to say, um, there's a message uh, also that you can go check out on YouTube that I talked about. And it was called by the way of the Lord. And it was dealing with, I don't know if some of you guys know about this story. Some of you probably familiar with it. Uh, it's in first Kings chapter 13 and it deals with, you know, the Bible references this brother as the man of God. The scriptures is plain. It lets us know that this guy was a man of God and God, you know, he, he, he took this individual, he called him and said, listen, I need you to go cry out against this altar. Uh, I believe it was Jeroboam that had the altar and he was doing things that God was not pleased with. So he had the man of God. He said, listen, I want you to go and cry out against this altar. And he says, but when you go and cry out against it and everything that you need to do, you know, in this place, he said, while you are there, I don't want you to eat nothing there. I don't want you to drink nothing. You know, he just basically laid out his word. In other words, we live by every word. Uh, what does the scripture says? That we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So God laid the foundation. He gave him his word. And that's what we should be living by right now. His holy word, the Bible, the scriptures, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So God gave him the instructions. He sent him on his way. Long story short, he did what he had to do. He's getting ready to leave out. And and Jeroboam is like, listen, you know, why don't you stay and eat and so on and so forth? He says, listen, the Lord told me the word of the Lord told me that I shall not eat nothing in this place or drink nothing in this place. And he went pretty much about his business. But what happens is there was a young man that went home and I believe it was his father. He went home and told his father about what he had saw. So basically his father wanted to track down the man of God and it was crazy because he tracks him down and I, and I want to read from um, from the 18 verse first Kings 13 and 18 um, because he basically asked him the same thing like listen why don't you come home with me let me prepare a meal for you and I'm paraphrasing when you get a chance go and listen to this message he says come home with me I got a meal prepared for you I want to you know basically be a blessing to you and the man of God tells him listen the Lord told me that I shall not eat nothing in this place or drink nothing in this place in other words I got I got the word. The scriptures is already laid out. I follow these to a T. As long as I follow these to a T, I shall be fine. But listen to what the guy says to him in the 18 verse. First Kings 13, 18. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. So this guy was a prophet. So he so listen to what he does though. 
He uses his influence and his position. This is what he started out with. And that's what a lot of times these individuals do. They hover their position over you. I'm the prophet of God. I am the pastor of God. I'm the apostle. You know, like this is the things that they say to you that kind of, you know, stops your questioning or, or won't allow you to follow the word as you originally heard it. Because a lot of times people are doing things, to be honest, that they kind of know is contrary to the word, but they're scared to say something about it. You know what I mean? Or they're scared to go against the man of God because, or the prophet of God, even though God's word says something different, but let's keep reading. It says, I am, he says, I am a prophet also as thou art. And, and listen how he tries to confirm it how, or how he seals it. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water. Watch what the scripture says. But he lied unto him. So here this is, is a prophet that he he comes to the man of God and says, listen, the Lord told me and look, look what he does. He, he hypes it up. He adds to it. You know, um, that's why when you look in Peter, Peter talked about, you know, with, with these swelling words, this is how they make merchandise of you. This is how they entice you. What did he do to entice him even more? An angel told me. He got spookier with it. He got he got more spiritual and deeper with it. An angel told me, but the scripture says this man flat out lied to him. And but that's not going to be the problem because somebody may say, oh, well, that's not right. He shouldn't have lied to him. But listen, that doesn't matter that he lied because the man of God already has instructions from the Lord. So no matter what he said to the man of God, it shouldn't really matter because God had already laid the foundation of what he should do. But let's read on. Verse 19 says, so he went back with him. Uh oh. And did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass. Watch this. As they sat at the table that the word of the Lord. Now, look. The same prophet that lied unto this man, the word of the Lord comes to him that brought, it says, oh, watch this. It says the, the word that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. They made it clear. This ain't some other prophet sitting at the table with them. This is the same God that lied. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah saying, thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou has disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and has not kept the commandment, which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. Listen, this story always messes me up. It, ever since I heard it, when I, you know, since I've been saved years ago, when I first heard it, this story is powerful because two things, the guy that lied to him, God turns around and uses the same God to prophesy to him the thing that he did wrong, how he disobeyed God. And some of you might say, oh, that's not right. He lied to him. And then God uses the same guy to prophesy to him. Listen, because his lie and what he did, that that wasn't the major problem. God is going to deal with him for lying and what it was he did. But the major problem was that this man of God, he did not follow through with the word that God gave him and the responsibility for falls on him just like it does you and that's why you have to read your scriptures yes we want to trust these men and women of God we want to believe that everything they are telling us is right but unfortunately some of them are lying and when you watch this documentary you will see some of these guys are lying and they are making up stuff that God never said so God is saying listen you need to be responsible and read your word you don't have have to understand everything but read and as you read I will give you understanding of my word and that way you will be able to discern because we discern through the spirit you know when you hear people say oh pray for the spirit of discernment the spirit of discernment isn't some gift
gift, the spirit of discernment is the Holy Spirit. And how do you discern? You discern by his word, because if somebody is saying something that's contrary to his word, but you haven't planted that down on the inside or talked to God about that, you won't be able to catch that they are lying or that they are making things up. Like I said, we make up stuff, you know, in the body of Christ because it sounds spooky and it sounds eerie. And a lot of it is just made up stuff. It's just stuff that people are pulling out of the thin air, you know, just to make themselves look even greater than they are.